In this video, I'm going to show you how you can customize some of the basic slides available to you in Adobe Captivate 12. I've done a couple of videos so far, and one of the feedbacks that I received on the channel was that, uh, when are you going to produce some content for beginners? And I guess that makes sense. You know, a lot of times I assume that Adobe Captivate 12 users are already Adobe Captivate 2019 or Adobe Captivate 2017 users who've simply upgraded. But if you are brand new to Adobe Captivate and you're using the all new version 12, uh, this video of course is for you. So let's start off by creating a new project here. I'm gonna click on new project. And let's take a look at sort of the workflow that's necessary for creating just standard content slides. We're not gonna do any fancy interactions or animations today. We're just gonna focus on putting some content on some slides here. Now, you start off with your toolbar over here. Now, if you take a look at how this is broken down, there's a couple of areas that I want you to focus on today for this video. The first is the text blocks. Now, if I click on that, you'll see I have three options. I have a standard paragraph, I have a multi-column content, and I have a list block as well that's available. Now, this doesn't seem like very many options for text, but here's what I wanna emphasize for you. Let's start off with a paragraph text block. Now, that's going to create exactly what you'd expect, a paragraph here that you can replace with your own text, but I wanna take a look at the properties inspector, and that's this panel on your right hand side of your page some of the items are collapsed at times so you can always open those up and see what you're working with here this first section is for alignment and spacing presently as you can see it's set for 80 percent and that means that there's 10 percent blank space or padding if you will on either side there's also vertical padding of 50 pixels and 50 pixels. So you've got space above and below. As you design your course, if you're designing from a storyboard, you might look at this and think, well, that doesn't quite match what the designer of my course is looking for. So you could obviously change these settings here. I'm gonna collapse this as it was before and point out, of course, there are design options that save you a lot of the nitty gritty parameter setting. And you can simply scroll through these. There's probably several dozen in this particular blocks case so that you can choose from. So there's quite a bit here that you can select that may be a closer match to what your storyboard suggests. Now you'll notice that these design options seem to include other items. And that's a part of blocks in Adobe Captivate. Blocks are made up of components. Now, for right now, the only component that we have on our display is the body component, and that's just the text that we see here. But we are certainly free to also add a subtitle, a title. You can configure this as a card so that it floats over the background with its own unique background. And you can also add buttons if that's going to be necessary. We'll get into interactive stuff a little bit more in a future video. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the button controls here and we'll just focus on what we have here. So in this case here, you certainly could resize this block to fill this particular slide. But remember, of course, with responsive design, the height of something really doesn't matter all that much because you're gonna view this on different devices. So if this was just sort of the default, which we had before here, which I can just adjust to, something like that, uh, you'll see that it just tightens things up and that might be more desirable for responsive design. But the great thing about Adobe Captivate 12 is that you're not limited to just one block per slide. You can continue to add blocks that match your design that's in your storyboard. So let's say, for example, we wanted to add some images to this particular slide as well. And you can choose a single image like this one here that also includes some text. Let's do that one. And you'll see the same idea. You'll see, of course, 
um, different design options that are available. Also, too, you'll notice that you have scale, tile left, tile center, and tile right. This deals with the image that's part of this. So if I tile left uh, in responsive design, you'll probably see uh, a layout that's more to the left of the image, whereas we've got the tile right, and we might see more of the right or tile center if we want to make sure that the center of the image is displayed. So these are choices that are going to be important to you when you are creating content that includes images. And again, like before, each of these blocks contains multiple components. So if my intention was only to add an image here, I can unselect caption and subtitle and just display an image on this slide here. The default image, of course, it's sometimes hard to see. Uh, there's a little white icon that if you move your mouse over, you'll see the cursor for your mouse change, and you can click on that and select a new image to replace it, either from your system or from the Adobe Captivate Asset Store. Let's choose something from the Asset Store. So here you can simply scroll through all of the elements that are available for free in the Asset Store here, and you can select an image that might be appropriate for your learning. You can also type in keyword search and search with presently the 876 images, which I'm sure will grow over time. But let's look for something, let's say medical. And let's say uh, we're showing a meeting with medical professionals, and we can replace that image with this image that you see here. If the image layout doesn't look so great, if you double click on that, you can actually change how the layout will appear. So if I don't need all this stuff at the bottom, I can resize that so we see more of their heads as well as the display that they're viewing. So let's go ahead and press save, and that looks pretty good. If I wanted to have multiple images on the slide, let's delete this block as if, you know, I'm just going to select it and press delete on the keyboard here. And we'll try a different media block. In this case here, we'll do the image grid. The image grid is really appropriate for responsive design because, of course, when you're viewing it in responsive design, the objects that are currently side by side with one another will get rearranged to fit whatever space is available. And, of course, with responsive design, the paradigm of a slide being a fixed aspect ratio kind of goes out the window here. So we can have our course include a title, our little paragraph that introduces things. Our mobile users will scroll down to see the various uh, images and text that goes with this particular block. And then, of course, uh, they can either move on to another slide or you can keep adding blocks infinitum, essentially. I'm not a fan of the infinite e-learning course, but I do like the idea that certain slides will scroll down, uh, especially when there's more content than what other slides might have. So I think I'm probably going to add a back and next button to navigate from this slide to other slides in my course. So let's just do a very simple set of buttons that can be added to this particular slide here. So I'm going to choose button. This is going to add the button block at the bottom. You don't really need to worry about resizing the stuff. Again, you know, the concept of a, you know, 16 by 9 aspect ratio slide, again, goes out the window with Adobe Captivate 12. Don't even think about that. With the button interaction, and even if there's buttons available for some of these other blocks, like the text blocks or the image blocks, I like using the button blocks themselves or the um, interactive blocks. Now in this case here, and I'll show you why in a moment, I might need two buttons in this case. Now at first you might think, well, how do I get these to line up like you would typically see a back and next button line up? Maybe it's through here, maybe it's through the padding. No, in fact, in this case here, if you hover over the buttons themselves, you can select to distribute the buttons um, evenly or uniformly, 
and uh, maybe you choose center aligned, whatever, whatever it is that, that sort of is the standard in your organization. One thing that I'm a big fan of is choosing icons rather than text. And the less stuff I have to translate for other languages, the better. So I'm going to select this button here. And rather than choosing, you know, a button with text, I can actually choose a design that simply is an arrow pointing in the previous direction. And we can do the same thing for this button here. So again, when we're looking at this in responsive design, that looks great for a tablet. And that, of course, looks great for a smartphone. When they get to the end of that slide, they have a back button and a forward button. The configuration is to uh, stack them on top of one another because there might not be enough room for, for it to show otherwise. But that's okay. Don't worry too much about that stuff. Just design your content. Focus on the content. Don't focus so much on the layout. And let Adobe Captivate's responsive design take care of itself. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.